Thank you, Lord. Please still remain where you have fire because your potential will be needed soon. I was sitting down there and the Lord imparted my favor to something. Asked me to make use of that incident to release certain prayer bullets for our lives. And last week, that's what the Lord reminded me. I was in a church, a parish we call House of Peace. Today, I'm in another place here called City of Peace. If the Lord tarries, amen. If the Lord tarries next week, I'm pleased to be worshiping in Tabernacle of David. And I discovered David, David, David. And there's something concerning David that is, to me, is above every other thing that the Lord has you to decorate David, and that is mercy. Mercy. To the extent that when Bartholomew the blind, thousands of years after David had gone, had gone, the blind called upon Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says, in mercy side thy throne be established. I'm trusting the almighty God today. Somebody is here, the Lord will decorate with that mercy. I want you to pray for yourself. Oh, lift up your hands. Say, Father, have mercy on me. 
pray that prayer with all your heart. Have mercy on me. Yes, Lord. Let your mercy decorate my life. Let your mercy decorate my life. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, oh Lord. Have mercy, mercy on me. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the Almighty God hear your amen louder. Before we go on this the same prayer, we need to understand what mercy does. Mercy is that thing that will not allow your life to be in a mess. That is truth about matter. Wherever mercy flows, such a fellow can never be put to shame. A mercy travels or goes with two other companions. They are known as grace and faithful. Wherever you meet grace, you can never be disgraced. Wherever you meet faithful, you can never labor in vain. That is why you need to cry to God and say, Father, from your throne of grace, have mercy on me. Pray, pray with all your heart. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Let me begin to enjoy your mercy. Yes, Lord. Rekate rebo, rekasata ya ponikesenia. Yes, Daddy God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Ah, hey, I want you to pray that prayer again. When and we are ever and whenever there are two people, oh, happen to make the same mistake. One can be justified or be set free when one will be punished. Check their life. What is not present here is faithful or mercy or grace. I want to give you an example so that we can pray that prayer one more time. I'm trusting God for somebody. The mercy of God will decorate your life from today. An angel was despised to deliver a message to a woman called Mary, the mother of Jesus. After all the things said and done, Mary has a question. How can this thing be? Check the Bible. She had explanation. Because ever before the angel began to speak, the angel said, Thou art highly favored. The same angel or the same purpose of Chibiani, visited Zechariah. Check the Bible. Zechariah had the same question. How oh, can this? The angel could be called as saying, Ah, he said, I am Gabriel. For asking us a question, for the next nine months, you won't be able to speak. Faithful spoke for somebody, nothing spoke for him here. I'm trusting the Almighty God. Your life will be decorated with God if I favor. Help me to lift up the faith of your neighbor. Join your hand with your neighbor, please. And loud and clear, say, Father, into every aspect of this, your children. Let your mercy flow. Pray, pray, pray right away. Let your mercy flow. Let your mercy flow. Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. 
thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I believe the throne of Nigeria will be established through God's mercy. God spoke to Rod at the beginning of this year through our Father and the Lord. That the beginning of the year will be raw, but the later hand, when we forget our sorrow. So join your hand with your neighbor and say, Father, have mercy on Nigeria. Pray with all your heart right away. Have mercy on Nigeria. Have mercy on Nigeria. Let Nigeria begin to experience your mercy. As you have promised, let your mercy decorate this nation, Nigeria. Have mercy on Nigeria. Have mercy on Nigeria. Have mercy on Nigeria. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy on Nigeria. Daddy God, have mercy on this nation. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Glory be to God. In the highest, amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah, oh, for his mercies endure forever. Amen. Hallelujah, oh, for his mercies endure forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say, glory be to God, in the highest, amen. For oh, his mercy, and your forever, amen. Hallelujah, oh, for his mercy, and your forever. I see God, Jehovah, you are the man of war. Your mercy is mercy, and your ever, ever. Oh, praise is all The Holy One of Israel, the God of mercy, the only one who speaks and it is settled forever, the one who has been before any other thing, the one who will continue to exist, we have there nothing again. We bless your name this hour. We say thank you for yesterday. Thank you for today. Thank you in advance for our tomorrow. Please, Daddy, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Even as your children are freed into the life of all of us, let your mercy flow. Maritally, Amen. physically, Amen. spiritually, Amen. ministerially, Amen. administratively, Amen. politically, career-wise, business-wise, let your mercy flow. Amen. Daddy, let your mercy flow. Amen. Oh Lord, let your mercy flow.
and daddy please before the end of this day have mercy on Nigeria have mercy on Nigeria heal our economy heal our nation all that you have said concerning this nation concerning a lifting up begin to fulfill them today in Jesus name this our Lord bless your children let there be salvation let there be healings release your deliverance empower your world thank you father for having answered and at the end of it or this morning let only your name be glorified in jesus name we pray say amen louder unless someone shout hallelujah god bless you you may be seated During our morning service, God bless your choir. Put your hand together for our choir. They have been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. During our first service today, we started the message entitled The Kingdom of Prayer. And we focused our attention on the kingdoms. He said, devil has no kingdom of its own. Only two kingdoms that they see, the kingdom of God and kingdom of men. Satan has no place where he dwells. It's only God who is dwelling in heaven. And we have been given this life to occupy. But the devil has already deceived us by taking away from all what belonged to us. And by the special grace of God, we pray through to take back what belongs to us. And I'm trusting God, you will never be empty again. We never, never, never again become a slave. Slavery in your life is over. Right now, we want to consider the language of the kingdom. Judges chapter 12, verse 5 and 6, I mean to 6. Judges chapter 12, verse 5 to 6. And the Gileadites took the passages of Jordan before Ephraimites before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites which we are escaped said, let me go over, that the men of Gilead said unto him, art thou an Ephraimite? If he said nay, then said they unto him, say now Shibboleth. And he said Shibboleth. For he could not frame the pronoun or pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passages of Jordan. And the affair at that time of Ephraimites, forty and two thousand. Here Gideon joined hand together with Gileadites, the people of Gilead, to fight against the people of Ephraim, the Ephraimites. And the Bible, I mean, the battle was fierce. And Ephraimites began to run away. The I say into your life today, all those who have been waging war against your life, the almighty God himself, we finish them for you. Yeah. Let your email be heard in heaven. Yeah. 
Then the Gileadites knew what to do. They went there straight to where they called the road of escape, where their enemy could easily pass through, and they will now escape through that place. And when they got to that place, they would see, man, we had that man. Are you an Ephraimite? And the man said, no, 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 no. Ah, Ephraimite came. No way. Okay. Say, Shibboleth. And the man would say, Shibboleth. Ah, you are finished. That is how they detected the language that this fellow I was told that during the Civil War of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, they made use of that method to discover who strikes is who and who. For the battle here, that day, 42,000 were slaughtered because of the language. If one will not be able to speak the language, or where he thought his life belongs to, such a fellow may experience death at the end of the day. So as we are venturing into prayer, because the first survey we've discovered the importance of prayer, and before we lead us to another prayer, let me very briefly refer to you the language of the kingdom of prayer. Well, let me explain to you. Some years ago, I was already a state pastor. That was 95-99. I decided to do a course in a university. And they told me, for this course, I will need Christian religious knowledge. And I've never sat down for that one before. So I didn't have the paper. So I put in for GCE Nigeria here, and uh, I still remember how I wrote that day. I even collected for answer seats. It was very simple. The result came out thereafter, and I had F9. I couldn't tell my family that Pastor Fay Bible. I was already a state pastor. I have. What color you can call a degree in the theology. But suddenly I call one of my pastors who happened to be an area pastor that means say, sit down. I feel the Ah, he said, Daddy, you spoke pastorally. That what happened to you. You didn't speak the language. I said, What is the language? Ah, sit down, sir. And he told me, when they see or they ask. Who is the father of Isis? Say Abraham. Full stop. Say, don't spiritualize it. <laughs> he taught me. I obeyed him. I still remember when I sat for the same paper the following year. I was tempted to spiritualize it. I will remember. Speak their language. By the time I finished all the questions, I could not even write up to half of the answer uh, uh, sheet. I, I said, will that be enough? I remember again. The result came thereafter. I had A1. Because now I could speak their language. By the special grace of God, after this message, we begin to flow in the realm of the Spirit. Language number one is the language of faith. You cannot move with God. You cannot approach him if you don't have faith that is required. Be reminded of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. Hebrews 11, 1 to 6. Particularly in verse 8, we discover that all the elders who had gone before us, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the, 
the reason why they experience what they experience in God is not because they are big people, they are fat people, they are worthy people. It's simply because they have faith in God. The Bible says in verse 2, by it, the elders obtain a good report. I'm trusting God that from today, we begin to obtain a good report. Because I know from today, you will begin to pray. I told you in the first service, whoever will not pray will be destroyed. Because we are living in a kingdom where your enemies are ready to kill you. The only way out, it will be right there before the Almighty God in prayers. And why do we need the particular faith? Excuse me? When you are ready to move with God, he begins to speak to you. And he will never speak the language of this planet. I'm not talking about our dialect. I'm not talking about our mother tongue. He will not come low to speak the language. By the time he speaks, you, are, you try to begin to think about what he's saying with your, our brain, we feel. One of the men of God said, and I quote, whenever something happens, if you can explain it, he said, that is not God. But when you cannot explain it, he said, that is God. This God will not begin to speak to you in the language you begin to say, okay, I understand. Not at all. Go and ask Moses. In, Gen in Exodus, rather, chapter 14, verse 15. Exodus 14, 15. Here were the Red Sea. Right there behind happened to be the enemy. They cried to God. God said, why are you crying unto me? Tell the people of Israel to move forward. Let's say you are the member of the parish where Pastor Moses pastored. And they tell you to move forward. Say, oh God, do you see what at the front? But that is the language of God. Ask Joshua in Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 to 5. Joshua 6, 1 to 5. When they got to the wall of Jericho, the Lord told them, well, this is how to deal with the wall. I want to uh, ask you to go and study the wall of Jericho that time. I will understand that uh, six trailers can park side by side at the wall of Jericho to tell you the width of the world. That's where Rahab the harlot built her own house. Yet the Almighty God said, this is the way how to pull it down. Keep quiet for six solid days. But each day, walk around it once a day. On the seventh day, walk around it seven times and shout. Is that reasonable? Not at all. We heard the testimony of a brother right here now, today, who was preparing for his marriage. No, no house yet. And the house he wanted to you to either to buy or to rent, God said, give it to me. Is that reasonable? If somebody is here and you say, are you crazy? Are you mad? That is the will of God. It's for, if we want to war with God, we must be ready to obey whatever he will tell you to do. And may I remind you of a certain thing. There, there can be no arrival without a departure. Take notice of that. And every departure is an adventure. And every adventure is a risk. Anytime I'm able to travel by air, particularly outside the country, immediately we already boarded, seated in the aircraft, I will call my wife. And she said, God will go with you. I've never had my wife say, praise the Lord. Never. 
But by the time I arrive at my destination, I will cause I praise the Lord. By the time you are ready to take a journey, you may not see the totality of the joy. It's an adventure. And that is the reason why you must depend on God wholly and absolutely. Let me prophesy into your life. You will arrive safely. Amen. You will land safely. Amen. That plane of your adventure will not crash. Amen. Come and say amen louder. Amen. So God will begin to speak to you. His own language. Because he wants you to leave the level where you are to the next level. If you see a man, he just hitting record. That man can never be known. He doing something that someone else had done before. But then when a man is ready to break records, then that fellow you know, because he's doing something that no one has ever done before. Language number two. It's known as the language of intimacy. The language of friendship. And I'm, def I'm going to divide this one into two very briefly. Number one is this. If you are ready to pray, you must be at peace with all men. I have said it somewhere. I said there is only one assignment that I know. If you are doing thoroughly or heartedly, you will make heaven. I said that is prayer. It is only in the kingdom of prayer that you cannot deceive yourself. Or you cannot be deceived. I can preach and go to hell. I can sing and go to hell. I can minister and go to hell. I can perform miracles and go to hell. It is not possible for me to pray. I'm talking about true prayer and go to hell. Because immediately you kneel down to pray. Either you are correct or you are wrong, you will know. The reason why many run away from prayer is simply because their life is not right with God. So you want to enjoy praying, which you must. Make sure you are at peace with all men. I was talking to my wife this morning. I said, a miracle happened to me yesterday that I've been trusting the Lord for for a long time. I offended a man who happened to be my in-law. Oh, my God. And what happened? The daughter came to stay with us during the holiday, getting permission from the father. And the day the daughter wanted to go, my daughter was about to receive us so three days after that one. And now, begged the daughter, can't you stay, Tim? So your, um, your sister will, said, no, I will stay. Can we call my dad? And I got permission from the daddy. I said, okay, okay, okay. I don't know this. Okay, 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 on the other side. You know, there are different between you tell your son or your son, so I go say, yes, you can go. And the other one, you suddenly go, go. <laughs> and go is go. And since I'm not right there before him to study his continents, to attune telephone, telephone conversations, I thought I've been granted. And when the daughter was going back, we pack a bag of rice and what have you. He told the daughter, either you leave the back outside or you send to wherever I come before you enter. We, are, we try all our best possible to track him down. To, no way. For almost two years now, I've been in bondage. Yesterday, yesterday, the Lord did it for me. Be at peace with all men. If you are here and you are quarreling with somebody, you have no room in the kingdom of prayer. No business there. I'm trusting the almighty God as you are living here today. If you have anybody you are quarreling with before the sun says today, go and say to it too. Because in the realm of prayer, 
you must be in agreement. I mean, you must be friendly to all. Even your enemies, your heart must be clean that you are not, that you are peace with this fellow. And the name of the Lord be glorified in Jesus' name. The second aspect of that intimacy is your relationship with God. Who you are before the Almighty God will determine how you are going to approach Him. Let me give you an illustration. I've given that illustration perhaps here before. We have three people in my family who normally knock the door of my house. My, our housemate, any of our children, and then my wife. Anytime the housemate is knocking, the knocking is faintly done. I mean, without making any statement. In the past, I used to say, who is that? Now I don't say that one again, because I know he's knocking. We try all our best possible to make himself feel, himself feel at home and so on and so on. No way. The knocking continued for the past three, three, four years. But when any of my children is knocking, wow. They say, Daddy, open. At times, they will rush and say, Why are you clocking like this? And we just need some money for the child card. That is how. They, I try to correct them, no way. The, blo the blood we normally speak. So why the housemaid will knock the door faintly and the end of the children will bang the door open? If my wife is knocking, it's another episode. <laughs> she will say, who closed this door? <laughs> and when I open the door, it will say, Why have you closed the door? What for? What for? What am I having it? What am I trying to explain here? Your relationship with God will determine how you will approach His throne, who you are to God. So let's check it. Who am I before this almighty God? Do I just come to his house to collect and run away? Do I call upon him when I need certain thing? I approach him in like a way we have, we deal with our fire, uh, fireman. You know, fire be great approach. Oh, come on, oh, fire on the mountain. But God is looking for our fellowship. I'm trusting the Almighty God today that as we, speak, as we speak the language of intimacy, the name of the Lord be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Remember what Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. 2 Peter 1, 16 to 18. And what Paul said in Acts 26, 19. Acts 26, 19. And what that blind man, whose eyes have been opened, said in John chapter 9, verse 25. John 9, 25. Peter said, we are not talking about fables. We are high witness of his majesty. We are high witness. There are certain things now, if you tell me God is, uh, God is not interested in that, I will uh, begin to fight there before I know I'm committing sin because God is real to me. It's real. Paul said, I cannot, I cannot deny what I saw. The man who was blind and the, the law opened his eyes said, what are you talking about? I don't understand. All what I know is that once I was blind, now I see. Uh -uh. What is the argument about that? And if it's not a man, if not I've been sent, it has not been sent from God, how could he have opened my eyes? They say, are you his disciples? Say, you say so. But I know what I'm talking about. Do you know, after today, your testimonies will be real. Yeah. I can't hear your amen hey, louder. Yeah. Come on, say amen hey, louder. 
Number three is the language of holiness. The language of holiness. Who we are saying to wherever God is, to throne of grace, to tabernacle of God. Anyone that has clean heart, clean hands. I begin to wonder why people play with sin. And I see the reason why. They do not pray. If they truly pray, they will have been totally out of sin all these years. I heard again that some Christians commit fornication. Some Christians commit adultery. Some Christians can fortify records. Some Christians can invest you money. Do they pray? The answer is no. Because if they do pray, they will have discovered that prayer and sin cannot cohabit. So, and we must seek the face of the Lord because storms are coming. It is only the almighty God that can rescue us from all the storms that are coming. By the special grace of God, the storm we are passing through now will soon be over. Yeah. Starting from the end of this week, every storm we are passing through will soon be over. Yeah. When we find our prayers right there before the Almighty God, we discover that He will give us the wind to flow and to soar over every storm. Follow peace with torment and holiness. Hebrews 12.14. Hebrews 12.14. Holiness. So as we are living here today, make sure that by the special grace of God, you are ready to war with God. And finally, is the language of mercy. The language of what? If you decide today to be a blessing to someone, suddenly you begin to see how your prayers will be answered. God is looking for someone who will send to help that fellow, to help that fellow, to help that fellow, to help that fellow. Before the Almighty God will bless a man, he will want that God, I mean that man to decide to be a blessing. If I have a young man right there by my side, or a young girl, and I use the word young, being an elder, either elder politically, an elder maritally, an elder financially, an elder whatever. You see this one, and you make, you've made up your mind, I will not allow this cock to grow. I will not allow this young to grow. I will not allow this egg to ash. Find out the more you are pulling down that man, you yourself, you are going down. That is the truth of the matter. But when you've made up your mind, oh Lord, help me to lift this one up. God knows when you get up there, you will lift him up there and you have been praying, Lord, promote me. Who am I going to use to promote this one? Yes, this one. Do you know, everybody needs somebody in this life. And God will say, okay, I will promote you so that you can lift this one up. By the time you are lifting the pencil up, what is happening to your hand? Your hand is going up. So make up your mind today. You are going to have the heart of Jesus, the heart of the Almighty God to show mercy. Evangelize. Rescue people from hell. Rescue them from poverty. Rescue them from all kind of insanity. Rescue them from pain. Go and rescue them from whatever is known as malady in their lives. Many are in sorrow. Go and rescue them. Suddenly you are going to discover, because this my son, this my daughter, I've made up his mind. I've made up her mind. I think I will give her something. Because you can never give what you don't have. And for that reason, God will now begin to load 
your life will benefit because he knows you are going to have hand, stretch forth your hand to help someone. Was it about seven years ago? I repented. I cried. The Lord had mercy on me that day. I thank God. And what happened? I preparing for a program like this. And I want I decided to dress up. It took me some minutes before I decided on the suit I will wear. I still remember it took me for about another 15 minutes to decide on start and the tie. And then I began to look for the suit that will really fit in as it were. Before I finished dressing up, I've already spent about 45 minutes. And God spoke to me and said, you are dead. I cried that day. Suddenly he told me, do you know I'm sending this clothes to you? He said, tell me the last time in your life that you bought any dress with your own money. I'm sending them to you so that you can give it to certain people who do not have. I remember that very day. We sit about 15 or so suit left my wardrobe. About 20 pairs of suit left my wardrobe. About 50 sat left my wardrobe. Now I have peace because I know the reason why God is blessing me. It will go out there and bless all that. That is the language. That is the language. That is the language. And I'm trusting the Almighty God for you. That you are ready today to serve him. By his grace, he will surprise you. Amen. I can't hear your hymn louder. Amen. The best language that I do speak is my mother tongue. I don't need to think about the correct grammar. It is natural. How can somebody, therefore, speak the language we are talking about without being born again? It is practically impossible. And that's the reason why if you are here, you've not made yourself available to the Lord. Because we are going to pray certain prayers. I don't want the blessing of these prayers to pass you by. You are here, therefore, you want the almighty God himself. To lead you into the realm of the spirit. So that you could begin to flow in the realm of prayer before the almighty God. You want to be holy. You want to begin to speak the language of faith. You want to stand before the almighty God. You want to be a blessing to others. The starting point, therefore, is that the Lord must save your life. Thank God he has brought you to this place this morning. So that you can learn the language of prayer in his kingdom. And he's ready to accept you into his kingdom today. And I congratulate you that you are here. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. A dark song will be rendered. Please come out. I surrender your life to Jesus Christ. So we all stand, please. So we all stand. All to Jesus, all I surrender. to Jesus, I surrender all to him I freely I can see that something is about to happen to you today. Come, come, come. And trust him. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. He knows that you are here. That's why I brought you to this place. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all.
All to Jesus I surrender. All to Jesus. What are you still waiting for? I surrender. The Lord, your Maker is calling you right now. To Him, you say you come. Really it's about to start something in your life. I will ever love and trust. Whatever him that thing you've committed in the past, He will forgive you. His presence daily. Somebody say. I surrender all. I surrender all. Oh, all to the blessed Savior. I surrender all. In the first service. We talk about slavery. That Satan is there to enslave certain people. It is you that we say no. No way. I want to surrender to the one who follows my life. The one who died for me. The one who appreciates me. An Iranian gave her life to Jesus. And they asked him why. He said, well, I've read Korean. I've read the Bible. But I've discovered that whenever I open the Quran to read, I am condemned. But whenever I read the Bible, I am consoled. See, that has made me to surrender my life to Jesus. And so me, she had them again. In your Quran, where it is recorded that, that God loves me. So God is calling you today. Why shouldn't you surrender your life to him? We sing that song again. But the song is being rendered. Please come. Please come. Your enemy is here to destroy you. Jesus is here to save you. God bless you. God bless you. Surrender oh. to Him I freely give. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. I will let oh, yes, oh, yeah. love and trust oh, yes, oh, yeah. His presence has... daily live. And I say, I I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. All, all to, to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Father, we thank you for salvation. According to your promise, your word says, whoever comes to you, you will know where is cast out. And this, your children have come. Please, daddy, according to your promise, save their souls. Let your blood cleanse all their sins. Write their names in the book of life. The great to serve you to the end, release upon their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say amen louder. Please just remain where you are, dear, until we finish the prayers. Just remain where you are. God is about to lift somebody up now. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith forever, stable, we are above
array of a pilot who detected a rodent after they are taking off. As they were listening to a certain sound, a rodent, a rat, peeped. They couldn't go back to land. Suddenly, the co-pilot said, every rat is a rodent. That's a particular place where they can survive. Let's move up. And they increase their altitude. In a few minutes, that rat died. That's a place where God can take you. Where no rodent can disturb your life any longer. And I'm trusting God for somebody here today. You are going to that level. Yeah. Say, Father, with your everlasting hand, lift me up. Pray, pray, pray with all your heart. Lift me up. Lift me up. With your everlasting hand. Let me up. Let me up. Father God, lift me up. I don't want to operate. We are all kind of rodent will disturb me any longer. Let me up. Let me up. Let me up. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Draw me nearer, nearer, precious Lord, to the cross where Thou wast died. Oh yeah. Draw That the Gio brought me on board on this assignment some years ago. For 15 days, I cried to God. Alone, he closed it. Far away from home. On what I asked God, said, Give me the grace. And excuse me, I can tell you there's a grace for grace. The Bible says, In the fullness, we all receive and grace for grace. The faith that you need to be able to go to the next level, the Lord will release into your life. So say, Father, the level of that faith for the next level of my life, release into my life. Pray, pray, pray with all your heart. The level of that faith that I need, oh God, release into my life. Marika tetere reke satayaba. Ayele ke tetere ne katetere ma mama. Yes, daddy God. In Jesus' name, we pray. He said, they, they that wait upon the Lord, we renew their scent. It means a boy, they are called ego. I discovered that any time the ego is ready to fight a snake, it will not fight the snake on the floor, on the ground. All the stamina, all the strength, all the power, the snake has it right there. What happened is that the ego will take the snake up there. And when the snake gets up, all the power is totally gone. You are going to ask God to make your life like an eagle. To be able to deal with your enemy where the enemy will have no power to fight you at all. So say, Father, make 
make my life like an eagle. Let me begin to deal with my enemy. We are the, we have no power to fight me at all. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Yes, Lord. Let a rema recasata ya buraka sonia. A leke tete rene kapepo recasata yaba. A yele ketete rema mama recasata yabo. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, before I join my faith with your faith, one more prayer. That prayer was born just after the convention with the theme on eagle's wings. Like other pastors, I prayed, oh God, let me begin to fly. I want to fly like an eagle. I want to fly. But shortly, I think two weeks after that particular convention, we traveled to Israel. And I discovered that between here and Tel Aviv, you press your button of your seat, you turn to bed, you are sleeping, you order for food, you are enjoying yourself, and you are speeding at the rate that it will take you a few hours between Nigeria and Tel Aviv. I changed my prayer. I said, Lord, I don't want to fly again. Carry me. <laughs> carry me. I'm trusting God for somebody here today. The Lord will carry you. You can pray to him and say, Father, with your everlasting hand, carry me. Pray, 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 pray with all your heart. Carry me. Oh, Lord, carry me. With your everlasting hand, Lord. Carry me. Carry me. Carry me. Carry me. Carry me, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Please lift up your two hands to receive. Father, you've brought your children here today for a purpose. And I know in the spirit realm, that purpose is being fulfilled now. Yeah. After this service, you will never be ordinary again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Every form of weakness in your life, we disappear now in the name of Jesus. We've been taught the language of prayer. The language of the kingdom of prayer. Anywhere you need faith for the next level, you will not struggle there. Because what the Lord has done in your life is through faith. The next level that you need to become, to be, the faith that you need, receive it now in the name of Jesus. And because you've called upon the name of the Lord, you begin to experience the life of holiness. Yeah. Upon this generation, God will plant their mercy into your life. Yeah. Wherever you go, you will deal with people with mercy. Yeah. In the name of Jesus! And because you've made up your mind this hour to be a blessing to your generation, all that you need to help others at that level the Almighty God will want you to operate, 
Receive now in Jesus' name. In other words, that promotion you have been trusting the Lord for is coming your way. That contract you've been trusting the Lord for is coming your way. That appointment you've been trusting the Lord for is coming your way. That expansion you've been trusting the Lord for is coming your way. That lifting up you've been trusting the Lord for is coming your way. Is there any form of snake or serpentine spirit that have been disturbing your life? It's because you're operating with them at this level. The level where no snake will be empowered. Where no snake will have any strength to fight you. The Lord will take you to that level. And I speak into your life. Could there be any agent that they are tr troubling your life? Maybe there are sickness in your body. Maybe there are human beings in your community. Any agent that will say you will not reach your goal. The Lord God himself will deal with them in Jesus' name. As you have made your mind to be a blessing, the Lord will bless your life. As you've made up your mind to better the life of others, never in your life will you experience a better yesterday. Every day of your life will be more glorious. Daddy, we pray for this uh, region. Starting from this region, all the prophecies under this region, and our regional pastor, our professional pastor all over, please take them to the next level. Physically, spiritually, administratively, in the name of Jesus. And I speak to all the members of this region, all over the provinces. I say, struggling in your life is over. Thank you, Daddy, for having answered. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Say amen louder. Say amen louder. Say amen louder. Now let me ask you a question. What kind of noise they made when they pulled down the wall of Jericho? Not a what? Hallelujah. Let someone shout hallelujah.